Tilt Select podcast, baby. Most authentic, most organic podcast out here. Shout out to Kanye Rumbar, bro, for giving us a space, allowing us to do our show here, man. And thank you, all of you guys, for subscribing, watching. Today, we are with a LA native, Michoacano native. Yes, sir. Singer, songwriter, producer, Mr. Bobby Castro in the house, baby. Let's go. Thank you guys for having me. Man, gracias por, por darnos un poco de tu tiempo. No, no, gracias a ustedes por la invitación. ¿no? Busy. You're a busy man. Yeah, gracias a Dios. <laughs> it's, it's not easy, but it's, you know what they say, it's not work when you love what you're doing, but shit. I mean, it still works. But it still work, Man, if, if for people that don't know or he looks a little familiar, man, this is one of the main guys for the new anthem of the LAFC soccer team, the Corrido, bro. Yeah. So, man, give it. Mm, I got to, we got to, we got to. So, right away, bro, give us, how did that come about? How did you land to make the LAFC Corrido? Um, you know what? It was actually uh, my boy Chris, um, Sour Apple, that called me up about that. Um, and I think that, you know, the thing, thing, things, things get ma manifested. And it was crazy how I remember. I, I mean, I, I've been a fan from the gate, you know, from the team, because I'm a soccer fan. And to have a team in L.A. in, in my backyard, It was a real special thing. So I remember going to the first game, the inaugural game in L.A. and seeing the the, the field seats, right? Yeah. I, I wasn't even thinking as far as, as the as the song yet. I was just thinking like, oh, man, one day I'm going to get tickets right there or season tickets right there because that's crazy that's, to, be, yeah. <laughs> to, to, to be sitting there, right? For sure. And when I first heard one of the songs that, that was made for the team, I felt like this little like anxiety of like mm. like man I should do something for the team because it's it's um I'm from here you know I, I'm a native from here like I I grew up going to soccer games here at the Coliseum with my dad so obviously when when the homie when the homie called me and was like hey you know they're asking me to what's up if you could come through to the lab to to it's almost like I knew automatically that it was gonna get popping like. And obviously, because, you know, we're doing this for a certain amount of time, you got to go everywhere con confianza. Like, yeah. the, but I really felt a little, I, I, it's almost like I felt a little bit, I don't like to use the word overconfident, but I was very sure almost like that it was going to. I think you said that you, you wrote the verses in like about 30 minutes, no? Yeah, yeah, we had, we had the idea going quick. And um, it goes back to, I think, that living up to, To, it's really dope, right? When people vouch for you, the vouch is very Ooh, important, right? Talk about and, that. And, and when people vouch for you, touching goni todo, and 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 it feels good, but it's not just about feeling good; it's about living up to it, right? That could become a pressure at some point. Yeah. Um, it could even become a burden at some point, but I think you got to embrace that shit and tell yourself, like, yeah, this is what I do. Yeah, because when when people vouch for you, I mean, there's a sense of of loyalty, respect, right there, right? But how you said, you got to live up to it. So if they're speaking highly of you and then you don't come out and you don't you don't show up, yeah, because it's a double edged um, sword, sword, right? There. Because yeah. it's like you could either get there and they'll be like, "Damn, you're that and more," or, or you, you could get there and they could be like, wah, wah, wah. you know, like, like, <laughs> like Man, this is not. They're gonna hit up the the plug and be like, "Yo, why'd you bring them, bro? Yeah, why'd you even yeah, tell them yeah. to come so, through?" So and and so it's 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 in in a whole bunch of different aspects you gotta show up because it's also no no dejar quedar mal a la persona que te Oh. You know, that vows for you. If they care about him, they 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 care about, okay, I can't make him look bad. He he vouched for me. But then there's some people that, you know, at the end of the day, they're just like, they're just for themselves. Like, ah, fuck it. Yeah. It is what it is. And, and I think that's when you kind of shoot yourself in the foot yeah. by being like that. You know, you, I, we spoke about it last time about the whole thing about being grateful. And I think to wake up every day and be grateful for every opportunity we get will definitely keep your feet planted on the floor. And I think the sign las cosas mejor because you're coming from a from a different place of why you do the things you do. Yeah, so, I mean, th let's take this back. So we got it right into the LAFC. Everybody knows that now. Mm -hmm. But this started years ago. The journey, oh, yeah, the process yeah, started it's, years ago. It's a whole lifetime. Yeah, so let's take it back from the first moment you knew you were going to write songs, so, sing. Um, I, I remember being in elementary, and you know how they ask you the whole question about what do you, you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> and I was always conflicted by that. And maybe I shouldn't have because you're a little kid, but the thing about me living in Michoacan as a kid, um, you grow up faster. Like, like you're a little adult already. You know, you're having yeah, yeah. full-fledged convos, and you're worried about adult problems that you shouldn't have. 
And it's a gift and a curse, you know? Yeah. It's a gift and a curse because you absorb shit a lot faster. And fast. So to me, it wasn't one of those things where I just wanted to make up. But so me regañaban, right? Because I wouldn't participate. So they thought it was just me not wanting to do the work. But I was always very outspoken about the way I wanted to learn and the way I absorb things. And it's, I know that it was an orthodox, and I know that it was kind of like, yes, the more okay, you know? Mm, yeah. Just write something, you know? Just say you want to be a doctor like everybody else or a fireman. or, And I would be like, I don't want to be none of those things. Yeah, like, not for sure. And I didn't know what I wanted to be, so I was a little bit, like, like worried about that. Like, man, no quiero hacer nada, you know? Like, So I discovered music, like, at eight years old. And I remember feeling, uh, like, I've never stopped feeling what I felt then, which is like, this is it. Mm. This is what I'm going to do for the rest that of my part. life. Y este, yeah, it was, just, it, it was literally just, you know, growing up in the hood, your neighbors are your first best friends, you know, y luego pues con, con, you know, with our culture, like, on both sides eran compadres de mis parents, you know, padrinos de, de, de mi carnal, and we just grew up like that, y ellos eran, eran el papá de some of my neighbors, era músico, músico norteño, you know, like, mm. Y, este, y nosotros, and ours, and my mom's a singer, so they were compadres, so you could imagine on all the, 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 the family hangouts, pues sacaban las guitarras and they would start singing. Dan, dan, It's something dan. that was very normal to us, even before we, like, embraced it. And like, even, like, my dad would just sometimes, like, hey, cántame esta canción, and all right, cool. But we would just do it because he would tell us, not necessarily, because at the time, we really loved it like that until we just got into it. Um, and it was really my brother and one of my neighbors and that, that still this day, I work with him. We know we're still heavily involved in the industry working on music and it's a really dope thing to to, to be able to work with people that you started off doing this as kids Bucks. and I, I think that the defining moment was I, I teníamos un little keyboard pues que se lo habían regalado a mi neighbor and my brother and him would be they wouldn't come outside and play no more after that mm -hmm. so me and his brother would be like man these fools are just always inside now and y hasta que nos metimos nosotros un día en, y si te va a agarrar te va a agarrar you know and especially when you're a kid you're a sponge yeah so we went in there and it was dope and it was like damn this is... so in one keyboard we would play literally um bass rhythm melody and drums all of us like this squeezed you know? <laughs> and we loved it right and we loved it and we didn't know anything yeah. better than to I mean to us it seemed Just kinda, have fun. it seemed kind of far fetched to have all the real gear because it's expensive So one day they invite us to a party de, de un amigo de la familia de ellos que nosotros también conocíamos. Mamá de family, este, le decían paisano al señor. Él en su casa tenía like a rehearsal little spot donde tenían equipment. So they're like, so my neighbors are like, hey, let's go to this party. They have equipment. And we could jam out for the first time. Yeah, de veras. Yeah, Even though we only knew how to play this shit on the keyboard. Like, <laughs> but in our mind, I guess we were like, yeah, like we, we could do we'll, it. We'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is crazy that my dad was really tough on letting us go places. Like he didn't want us to be, a, he didn't want us to be a burden by like by like somebody taking us and maybe us. I don't know. Éramos bien portados because obviously discipline was crazy back then. So <laughs> you you, you can't have that. You yeah. can't have that shit now. There was consequences, right? Fuck yeah. So we go to this thing and we show up and we just start like, all right, this is what I'm gonna play this way. And we started a band that day, and that was literally, I think, the beginning of when I decided that. It's almost crazy that I never had a plan B because I thought that if I had a plan B, I didn't believe enough in plan A, you know? Damn, and that's from the beginning. That's when I was a kid. Like, I, I go back to those days, and and I always say, like, I think what has helped me a lot in the way I create is that I still create like that kid. And that's the only, that eight-year-old kid is the only person that I'm trying to impress, really, because in reality that kid would only do music for himself. Like, I couldn't wait to get home and run into the garage and just practice, not knowing nothing about the business, not knowing nothing about residuals, about royalties, about selling, about gigging, just wanting to create because I loved it and I couldn't live without it. And I think that if you stay true to that, yeah. you'll do you'll do your realest work, you know? Yeah, I think it goes back to how you, you know, in a, in a summary, it goes back to the how much you love it. You know, whatever your whatever your whatever your passion is, it's gonna give you the highs and the lows, and you really have to navigate through those lows. On, on, do I still want to do this, yeah. even though it's giving me nothing? I, I, that's that's when I think that's when when you really figure. I think that's when you make the real decision. Yeah. Because sometimes it just seems fun, and it seems like you know, and and I, you could imagine the time that I've done it. I've seen all of it. I've seen like 
the ones that yeah kind of wanted, the ones that really wanted, the ones that thought they wanted it, the ones that just as soon as they hit their first little um, bump on the road, they're like, ah, I'm straight. I mean, all the way from seeing people go home from from being out of town working somewhere. Yeah. And then you wake up in the morning and you just everybody's acting a little weird, and then somebody's right <laughs> there with, with their bags packed and a sad ass face, and <laughs> they just couldn't hack it, you know. And, yeah, but they hit you. Those, they always hit you with the. Sabes que, güey, no, no es mi tiempo, güey. Ahorita it's not the time. We'll wait on it. And, and 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 sometimes they don't even have words. Like sometimes it's literally they're homesick, and you know, a lot of us start this at a very young age, and and mm-hmm. you know, and, and and that's when you know what what time it is when you don't have mommy and daddy right there, you know, to to so, fall back on, to hold your hand, yeah. Because yeah. even now, like there's there's a lot of young uh, artists that are coming up that you know, and the power of social media where everything work, works out. It's it's easier, but back then, you know, you didn't have that type of of uh, accessibility to post on on YouTube, to post on TikTok, you know, go viral yeah, or yeah. have a viral sound like or, the way or, it is now. And then even like if you're if you're gone and you're on the road, you know, like most people, you know, at some point you see them FaceTiming, you know, their their loved ones, you know, yeah. whether it's their kids or their parents. Back then, that then. didn't exist. You were just <laughs> gone and you were gone. Let me know? hey, let me uh, call it real quick, and that's that's yeah, about it. Yeah. So so it's it's definitely a. And nothing's easy, I think. Anything that, that requires for you to have a whole lot of passion. Y pues tienes que estar loco, la neta. To, to follow something that is pretty much passion-based and that you got to risk it all. And for a long time, you're not getting nothing back. I, you know, when I start working with, 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 with youngsters nowadays, the, one of my first questions is like, like, you got to be a little crazy to believe that you yes. can do this because right. without that, you're going to give up fast because there's a lot of things that happen que te dan para abajo. Yeah. And then you're like, nah, no mames esta madre. Yeah, that, that's, that, first, that first moment of adversity, that first moment of, of question of like, damn, ¿va a seguir esto? Or sí, when's that, sí, when's sí, that sí. payout, you know? Porque like, I, I, want, I want you to give us that because people think because now you have the LAFC anthem and you have all these other songs out there that people have sang, you collaborated with, worked with, they think it's all glitz and glamour. Like, nah, you know, and, and it's like everything, I guess. Obviously, for example, it's social media, right? Social media, especially when you're um, an entertainer or an, an, a creative. And just shit, anybody on social media is a highlight reel. Mm-hmm. You know, let's be honest. Nobody wants to see the pobrecito shit. Nobody wants to see yeah. the, the, the struggle. It's like, oh, man, they want to see your highlight reel. And it's almost like a job description. You know, it's, it's a part of the job. But behind the scenes... It's it's anything that's worth it, that's worth doing. It's gonna be, it's gonna be tough and it's gonna be yeah. grueling behind the scenes because it's almost like it's not even worth it if it's not, you know. Yeah, because I'm I'm glad you bring up that point because you know we're gonna kind of piggyback off off of this moment at LAFC. You had wrote something the same day you dropped the most special song of your career was the same day you laid your brother to rest. Uh-huh. So, um. Earlier that week, there was, there was like between me and a lot of the homies that kind of made it out of the, of the of the, you could say some of the some of the worst times. Yeah, you know the nineties, the two thousands in LA, it was it was it was wildness, you know. Yeah. To be growing up at, at that time, so anytime I would see anybody from those, it it was this look, it was this embrace of like, kind of like, like. I don't know, almost like soldiers when they come back from war, you know, and mm-hmm. that they made it back. And, yeah. and it's a real hug. It's a real, like, only we know, right? Only we know what so, we've been through. So it was one of my, my, my homies that was one of those that, like, entre nosotros, and almost like uplifting messages, which was also a sign of growth, uh, mm-hmm. becoming men. Um, we would always be on each other like that, like, like hey, brothers, like, echenle ganas, you know, I, I like, vamos. Vamos, like, like, you know, ya no estamos, you know, you, like, ya la, no la hicimos todavía, pero pues... Ahí vamos. Ahí vamos you know, we're, we're better than we were yesterday. Yeah, we're still here. And he was one of those guys, and it, it had just been his birthday, like, let's say, Monday, right? Y le mandé un mensaje, like, like, hey, happy birthday, my boy, blessings, you know? And, 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 y él era de los que siempre me mandaba mensajes, like, everything I would do, you would message me, like, damn, bro, we see you doing it, and we're all rooting for you, bro, like, that's just one of us, you know, that's... Yeah. Um, fíjate, when I first got signed to Sony... I was on a little bit on the fence on the whole, like, like it's tough, you know, coming from where I come from and trying to do something bigger because I need, you, you, you flirt with the idea of selling out, you know, or like, or looking like you're yeah. selling out because, you know, crabs in a bucket. 
You know, like, like mm. it's almost like if you're trying to do more, like, ah, it's the way, yeah. But it's like, no, I can't better myself. You know, like, because, <laughs> it, it, and, and you, you're able to give more, to help yeah. more by doing that. And I understood that. I understood that. And it becomes a lonely road because of that, because not everybody grows at the same time and understands Facts. things at the same time, right? So Facts. I did feel a little bit weird, like, as far as, like, what is going to be said, which has never really affected me. Pero pues sí tiene que ver, you know, because, I mean, you're doing it for a certain reason. Y, y, y for it to sometimes to feel like, man, is it going to backfire? You got to be careful sometimes, you know, the way you carry yourself, the, the, um, how you how you say things, what you say. Long story short, I got a phone call when I first got that deal with Sony. And it was the opposite of what I thought. I thought I was going to be like a lot of like, oh, all of a sudden, you know, you know that, yeah, that, yeah. that, that how you, that happens. You change, bro, you change. But no, it was like, man, like the people were really fucking happy. And it was kind of one of those things like, man, you was really out here with us. Like yeah. and we, and we finally get to see somebody pretty much that was in the trenches with us, like doing it. And and it, and it felt good. And he was one of the ones I remember that, that called me to tell me that shit. So that's why it was. And, you know, this this journey has a lot of that. And I think it keeps you balanced because there's a lot of good and bad almost at the same time. Mm. That it's like one one won't let you drown, and the other one también no te hace que pierdas el piso, you know, que se te suba mucho. Yeah. So it, it, I've gone through a lot of those moments in my career where it's like, damn, I'm like getting this but losing this, and I understand it. I take it for what it is now, you know. For for it keeps me balanced because it's the truth. It was like I was at a funeral, burying one of my childhood friends, while a song, an anthem for, for my city, for my team, that was a, a, a something, is definitely a, a special moment in my timeline. Um, and it's crazy, you know, it's the yin and the yang, it's, the, it's, yeah. it's, it's literally balanced. So luckily I'm able to take things for what they are now. I don't let one thing, um, ni, ni tanto pa' acá, ni tanto pa' acá, because of things like that that I've experienced so much, you know. So I, I think the journey prepares you for what it needs to if you let it. You know, if you yeah. let it, if you fight it, and sometimes we we just want the good, we just want. There's no there's no learning a lot of times. There's no growth from that, everything being all good, and that's where like you have to have that that mindset, like ready to grow, ready to learn from everything that's happening, right? From the good things that are happening in your life to also the bad events that are happening. Okay, like what could I take from this shit instead of becoming the victim of like oh, it's the way it me pasó a mí, por eso no 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 no. It's like bro. That shit's yeah, making you. Yeah. That shit's that, making you tougher. That, that mentality, I think, in in anything where where you're where you're chasing your personal legend, it doesn't help you at all, right? Yeah. Because that stuff in your mind, it just it pretty much equals your own demise. You, you're in your head too much. You're you're being um you're being negative, and at the end of the day, it's about the energy that we put out that comes back to us, right? Yeah. So I've always, Luckily, you know, I figured things out pretty fast. When me pasaba una vez y no me pasaba otra vez type of shit because I would I would make the fire, you know, the fire that like, like use it for good. Yeah. Some people use it for like, oh, watch, watch when I make it. So and so that, but that is a rollo loco. You know, digo like, there's no time for that. You don't have the luxury to do that. Like, Facts. like you know, and 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 don't even expect a formal apology a lot of times. Like, look, in the industry, there's a, I'm friends with. Everybody, and yes, yeah, some of these guys at some point ignored me. Some of these guys at some point didn't turn to look. It was my job to make them turn around and look at me, and, and to create value for myself and my brand. To where there's no formal apology. My yeah. thing is that the fact that now they're looking for me, that now they're they, they, they're um appreciating my art or, or or what I create. That was the apology. You know, yeah, that's cool. It's a handshake. You know, it's the hombres. It's like I don't need everybody to come up to me like, "Hey, my bad for being like that." No pasa no. nada, loco. Because some of it. them have tried. Yeah. Like, hey, where you? And I was like, no pasa nada, where you? Ya como es este rollo. You know? it's, it's different times. Like you have people have to understand that. Si no te están viendo es por una razón. Like, what are you doing that's not letting you be seen? Yeah, and, and, and you know, that's the problem. I think sometimes where where we feel entitled, oh, right? Man. The entitlement. The, the, the entitlement and the wanting instant gratification, I think, is two things that almost kind of got fucked up because of social media, because social media made it very possible. Yeah. You, you know, you always had overnight sensations, even before yeah. that, right? Most definitely. But, like, you see, like, the, now it's, like, popping more, but, like, you see the TikTokers that in 2020, no, they were worth zero, and now because of social media and, and all that, 
oh, now they're worth fucking 10 million. Mm -hmm. But that's three years later. But that's the thing, <laughs> like, algo que viene muy rápido se puede, se, también se sí, puede ir just it, as fast. That, that was always a scary thought to me. And, and you know, I've, I, 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 I've always been a student of the game, you know, everything that I've ever been involved in. I thought, I always studied it because, you know, opportunity meets preparation, you know? Yeah. That's that's what luck is, right? It's like opportunity meeting preparation. And I always thought, when you get that opportunity, what is the point of working so hard to get that opportunity if you were not prepared for that moment? Yeah. And you're going to lose everything you, you work for because of your laziness or, or because of you not being as prepared as you right. could have been. You know, I was never yeah. willing to lose my my shot because I didn't do enough. Yeah. You know, so... Well, it's, good. it's exactly what you're saying. And sometimes we get the biggest blessing in the redirection. You get the biggest blessing when something doesn't go that route that you wanted it to, right? Oh, well, why didn't I get that call? Well, find out why. Yeah, yeah. Really find out why, right? Like maybe you would have been a sell sellout. Maybe it would have been the best per uh, environment to work in. And trying to understand that not everything that is supposed to be for you is, is good for you. Like, yeah, there's yeah. always something that, there's always something, there's always a good and bad, right? You get success, there's something bad that comes with it. There's the negative comments, there's the you changed, and there's people that leave your life, right? And then you get you get the downfall, and you also get negative shit. People leave you, because now you don't have anything to offer. Yeah. And no, the real ones stick it out. It's, it's, you know, you, you, got, you got to pick your battles, right? You, mm. you got to learn how to pick your battles. Facts. And at the end of the day, it's... I think that when you get to a point where you trust your journey, you trust your path, you trust you trust your journey, which I think is what takes the hardest work to get to that place. Facts. And the universe starts conspiring in your favor, and you got to learn how to how to accept it because a lot of times we shoot things away because even la humildad, right? That is very heavily ingrained in our culture. Like, no, que humilde. And then, you know, you would go places it's like, ¿Quieres? no, gracias. Aunque te estuvieras muriendo de hambre. No, gracias, ya comí. You know, <laughs> it, it was just, that's dope, right? Y, y, y caes bien, probably. Yeah. But too much of anything could be bad. Mm. You know, like, I, I know for a fact that that whole humildad thing held me back to a certain extent in my career. Yeah. Because you're always cool with just sitting in the corner. You yeah. Know? Which is like kind of waiting your turn, which also plays a part. But, you know, there's two sides to everything, right? Like, ya ves que en, en nuestra cultura hay un chingo de dichos. Yeah, um, that was about to ask you. What's que es, que es uno de los dichos que te, te dijeron tus papás that like resonates with you? Um, they, our parents have some wild ass. Yeah, dichos. you know my mom to this day she speaks, she speaks in 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 dichos. You know, like every day she has a new one that I'm like, damn, it's been a whole lifetime and you still haven't ran out of dichos. Um, you know what's a crazy one that has nothing to do with nothing, but it's just I'm gonna mention it because it was a dicho that I was like, sometimes that's like an energy that they throw at you too because. I was asking if I could go somewhere, and she's like, no. And then she had got into this thing where, like, you know what? I'm not going to cover for you guys no more. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to let you guys go do stuff without telling your pops, because if you know that your dad was going to say no, why should I say yes? Like, yeah, because my dad is super strict, and you don't understand. Yeah. So I was just going to go with the fellas, like, I don't know, to the park or something. And she said, no, you can't go. And I was just like, man, so I left anyways. But, and I feel like she felt it, because, you know, now that I know, you can't really lie to them. You know, yeah. you think you're getting away. Yeah, you so, think. And then the, the next day, ¿cómo te fue? Yeah. Like, so, and they kind of already know. So I remember que before I walked out the door, me dijo, Ira dice, la, obede la obediencia te protege, right? Mm. And I went one in, in one year, supposedly. But I think my whole life I've been so much of like, I soak things up that even when I don't want to, it happens, right? Yeah. Because I remember leaving and feeling that guilt and hearing my mom's words. Somehow I fall in the middle of the street somewhere and, 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 um, and I was about to get ran over by a car. And I thought, like, man, it's like a curse. Yeah. <laughs> so I went right back home. You know, so going back to Dichos has helped, has helped me a lot in my creative process because Dichos are clever. You know, yeah. they're punchlines. No, they're DR. Right? They're punchlines in, in a sense. So I've been able to use them a lot when it comes to rap and writing songs and corridos and all that. So it's, it's, it's definitely a... a a heavy part, I think, of, of our culture, you know. The the idea that what was just like one of the biggest lessons that your mom or dad taught you that like you carry throughout your daily life, especially in this point of your career. Man, there's so many. Um 
But I think they always taught me like not to not to feel sorry for myself, you know. And I think that you know there's so many things that I think that it that that builds the armor that you need, mm-hmm. and little parts here and there, you know. And, and and through a lot of times through difficulties, yeah. Which is why like sometimes we complain about things happening to us. The problem with being too complaining is that you 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 f- get dangerously close to falling into self pity, mm-hmm. and self pity does nothing for you but but waste time. Yeah. You know, like, yes, we fall and you fall into a hole sometimes and you got to start trying to work on getting out of that hole immediately as opposed to fucking, you know, just curling up right there like a little fetus and hoping that somebody feels sorry for you and, and picks you up. Like, yeah. nobody's going to come to get you, you know? That's facts. And um, so I've, all, I've all, I was also blessed with a lot of opportunities to learn that, like I said, the the, the journey will put things there and it's up to you si te avientas or no, you know, like, yeah. avientate al agua, you know, like, like you're never going to know if you know if you're going to survive. Sink, it. sink or swim. It's, yes, it's, sir. It's, it's, it's yeah. either, it's right now or never. I don't, I believe in divine time. There's a reason why this opportunity popped up right now. There's a reason why this is happening. You just got to figure out why. You're right. And if, and there's a lot of people that they use every single excuse in the book, but they don't find every single reason why to do it. Oh. And that's going back to the redirecting of, yeah. and I call it the redirecting of energy. I think that I was, I was almost excited when I figured that out. Yeah. Because I think anything you figure out as far as that can make things a little easier for you and nothing's going to be easier, but just easier when you have an understanding of it, le entras con más confianza, le entras sí. con más ganas de que sabes ya la, a lo que le tiras. Um, I, what did it for me, I think ultimately when I felt kind of one of those biggest growth in me that what I was like oh it was I remember at one point when I started kind of I guess getting what I had always wanted which was like the recognition and the and the people like being like oh shit this was dope you know have you have you heard this full stuff or have you seen him work but nothing is exactly that's why it's like be careful what you ask for right yeah because <laughs> uno lo quiere nomás porque lo quiere sí. not knowing what goes behind it to get there right yeah there's a hemos dicho antes like you're asking for success. You're asking for fame. But do you know everything that comes with it? And now that you know, do you still want it? Or you don't want it no more? You know, somebody asked me a question one day that was really, I was really quick to answer because sometimes just the way we feel now, the answer seems, yeah. Seems sure. perfect. Yeah, yeah. But I don't like to do that, right? I like to dig dig in and be like, no, wait. Because um, me preguntaron, like, if you knew that you would have to go through the things that you went through, to be able to do what you do now, you know, because obviously I'm able to do the things I do now because of the experience, Facts. you know, and without me not living certain things, pues como. So I was like, yeah, because it's worth it. Now it's worth it right now. But when I sat back, I was like, you know what? Nah, nah, I take that back. I'm not sure. I was like, because as a kid, if somebody would have put a contract in my, in front of me that literally broke down everything I've gone through and made me sign, I'm not sure if I would have signed that Yeah, because I'm looking at it. So when you go through it, you're going through it in real time, and and, and, and you're you know, you're fucking um you you're moving and, yeah. and and you're surviving and you're doing whatever you gotta do to do that. We're well, going back to why like why like you have to embrace the hardships and everything and redirect the energy is like. I remember for a brief moment there, because things could get overwhelming. Of course, so, you know, when when I first started getting my first there like. People, you know, speaking about me, vouching for me, or, te- or or calling me to pull up to other sessions. I overheard. I got I got invited to a session, and I overheard like you know, pues no se colgó el teléfono, and I heard the guy that invited me saying like, "Oh man, watch when this fool gets you right now. <laughs> He's gonna do this and this and that." And I, I took it like I didn't take it the wrong way, but I, but I, I I felt like a pressure like, yeah. And and I was in my own head where I was like, man, I gotta show up everywhere with a fucking magic wand, like I. <laughs> I can't just go anywhere now and just hang out. Like, yeah. what happened to people just wanting me to come over? Yeah. Because I'm a cool dude. Yeah. Now I gotta, sh- I gotta show up like a wizard now and be <laughs> like, mm, this is what's wrong with this shit. This isn't right. And I got in my own head about it. But luckily, I am also my own therapist and my worst critic and everything. And I think you have to be. I'm your. I'm my own therapist. Mm-hmm. How does that work? Well, I think that you know, and there's nothing wrong, right? To have yeah, to yeah. meet somebody to 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 no, to, for sure to to listen to you because and the reason the reason why this is going to be so important is porque being a man, prideful. I don't want nobody's fucking help. You can't help me. You can't help me. You don't care about my feelings, and then 
siendo mexicano, we have a different type of pride also. Oh, yo lo hago por mí mismo, por mis huevos hago esto, right? And the biggest thing is acknowledging and talking about your feelings, talking about how do you feel throughout this journey, whether it's a high high moment or a low moment. But when you get that power inside you to be able to talk to yourself and be your own therapist, be your own critic, be your own best advice, it's different. You maneuver a lot different. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like you have to earn that within yourself too. Yeah. It you got to trust it, yourself. Yeah, it's not just something that you're like, oh, I know best because then that's that's arrogance. Yeah. You know, it's like you're giving yourself the best advice because who knows better when you're doing, your body speaks to you. Yeah. You know, you, 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 Hell yeah. you, you, you're going to always know when you're doing wrong. Like you can't lie to yourself unless you're a piece of shit <laughs> and that's just how you get down, you know. But if you're someone decent, yeah, your body's going to always speak to you and you're going to know when. And to me, it's always been easier to just listen to that, you know, like. Yeah. Like the day and I was very young in my life but again because I grew up very fast. Um there's some people that at some point in my life were like, Oh, we're sorry, you have to No. Do not apply like I love it. I, I don't I I don't know if I would have changed anything because I was able to become the person I needed to become to do what I wanted to do in this life, right? Mm -hmm. So um all of that is 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 part of that process, like to trust yourself enough to know that you are not just telling yourself Nah, you're good. Para quedar bien contigo mismo. If anything is the opposite, it's like, are you sure that what you're doing is not wrong? Because you know how you feel, and you know how it's gonna make you feel to go move forward with this. It's if it's gonna affect that intuition, like that intuition before you, whether it's going out, whether it's before you do a certain an action. Yes, I have it. You already know the result. You know the what's gonna happen, the aftermath of this. But are you ready for it? Are you good with it? And then whenever you get that result, you can't sit there and be like. <laughs> Damn, I didn't know that was gonna. Happen. No, you did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. you did. Like, you don't don't you play yourself. yourself. Yeah, yeah, like again, we have our best intuition, and the and the person that can give us the best advice is ourselves, porque you know exactly how you're feeling, wherever you go, whatever you're doing, like you know how you feel. You can't be doing it because he or she wanted you there. Do you feel good with that? Like it's yeah. it's tough. Like one of the, one of the questions I had for you was like, how do you do with with neg with negativity? I redirect it. I, I I redirect that energy. Like I I don't take negativity. I don't give it so much importance. Mm -hmm. I immediately try to attack it and to switch it around into something positive. You know, um, because going back to that, like sometimes now when I'm 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 in a very comfortable place of who of understanding who I am and and I'm okay with who I am. Yeah, con mis defectos y mis virtudes. I think it's a little easier to deal with negativity when it's like that because sometimes negativity makes me smile a little bit because I know the growth that is going to come after that, you know, after I deal with that, after I'm able to, to turn that around. Yeah. At some point in life, yeah, that shit, it, 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 you know, you get in, in a hole, you get all discombobulated by, <laughs> by it because, uh, you know, and, and it goes back to that. Like, well, how confident are you in who you are yeah. and what you do? And that's becoming a man. You know, mm. and it has to do with becoming a man with dealing with things of, instead of just kind of putting them under the rug or like, or like, oh, man, why should I have to do that? No, deal with that shit like a fucking man. And it goes back to the whole thing, like, like how we're talking about, like, with our culture, right? I think we need to become some kind of, like, kind of us, especially, like, our generation, like a hybrid, right? Yeah. Because I come, I come from, like, gente de, 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 like, mountain men, you know, <laughs> gente de la sierra, and I just came back from a whole month of, like, soul searching over there in my, where I come from, and it was a beautiful thing, and, and, and I 100% got what I wanted from it, and I sat down with these men that were fucking titans to me, you know, that were, like, they were gods to me, they were, like, their word meant everything because they were so respected, and they didn't lie, yeah. and ellos afrontaban las cosas sin, sin, sin miedo, but also now that I'm grown myself, and I seen that whole machista thing, you know, that comes from us that Yeah. I understand that that you do have to have some of that in you as a man, as a as a masculine thing of like, man, I gotta deal with my shit and I gotta and I shouldn't need nobody to come and pick me up. Yes, there is also strength and vulnerability, right? But ni tanto de acá ni tanto de acá. Mm -hmm. Right? You gotta kind you gotta kind of mind uh, meet in the middle. What I was able to do is I was able to still get everything that I learned from these men that were my heroes that were like, like, like 
hombres de hombres, you know, like todo era bien derecho y era de ser derecho y era de ser y que no y que, y que hay que atorarle y que, you know, that type of shit. That, that, I grew up around that. But the toxic masculinity, masculinity of it, yeah. I at one point was like, you know what? I think our job, as far as like what comes, the people that come after us, is to fix, to fix those things, right? Yeah. Like maybe I should have a little bit more of a, something that, that maybe whoever I'm talking to in my family or that are looking up to me now, they're going to they're gonna fix my flaws, you know, till you become a little bit more as nothing's going to be ever perfect. Yeah. But I think that you at least have a fighting chance to to keep growing and becoming better men as as um generations go yeah. by. Do you do you think success is a lonely road? Um it is. It is. But in the process, right? The process is very lonely. The journey is lonely. But you also gain certain things that you wouldn't in any other path that's maybe more like You're around your family more. Maybe you're around a lot of people, and 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 this is a weird thing, right? Like the the yeah. the, the the entertainment world, and this is because you are surrounded by people and that are <laughs> praising you, and then all of a sudden the the smoke clears and the lights. And where's turn everybody? On, and then it's and then it gets lonely. Yeah. And I think those are that's one of those moments where I think people end up going back home. Mm. You feel me? Because a lot of times that lonely, um, cold hotel room in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> It, 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 what else can you do but think yeah you know? when when you're say you're on tour everybody's there for the tour working working once it's done where's everybody yeah and you, it, it, it's like you're being it's like you're in a high you're on drugs and social media has made it worse because now <laughs> you can be on there and you see everybody back home living you know life. Your, living life or at your cousin's quinceanera or are your homies that you grew up with like let's be honest um now for example my trips that I take or like going out to dinner is mostly with people from the industry because we have, we have the same calendar almost. We have the same time, like, mm. and everybody else has a different, you know, yeah, yeah. A, a different structure to their life that yeah. doesn't, that doesn't coincide with ours. So you end up, but like I said, though, sometimes you, you know, best case scenario is obviously you do the most that you can to be a part of your family and, and, and the people that love you and that you love. But then you also gain other families over here. So it's going back to that. So either you could see that as a bad thing, right? Like, yeah. or you could just redirect the energy and, 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 and make it a positive. Be like, you know what? Now I got two families. Yeah. You know, now I got a whole, two different set of people that, that, or, that I love and that love me. Y este, or como dijiste, or quit and go home. Or quit and go home. Quit and go home. Just throw the towel in. You, and that's something that you got to decide really quick because, um, you know, a lot of que I get a, the question about success a lot, about how, how does it feel? And, and, you know, and I mean, obviously the short answer is it feels good, you know, but there's times that I need to answer that a little deeper for myself. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, um, and I came to the conclusion that a lot of the stuff, a lot of the, 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 the people like, like, like my shit and praising me that I'm, I'm very grateful. Right. I, I don't think that, um, that's something that you can't lose because, Así no pierdes el piso, right? But I realize that it does nothing for my ego, but it does everything for like, like imagine to to think and to believe wholeheartedly that you were born to do something and to one day realize that it was all in your head. That shit could drive you crazy, I think. You know, when you spend your whole life and you lost so much and you sacrificed so much and then it wasn't it. Like you were literally just, it was a figment of your imagination So that's why it's like you sh you don't need it, right? You don't need like the praise, you don't need like the accolades or whatever. But it sure gives you a breather, and, and it buys you more time to keep going and to like to think like no, it's it's all mío, you know? Yeah, it's all mío because I think that it's like you know when you play those racing games and the time is ticking and then you gotta cross that line to get more time. Yeah, I think that's what it does. You know, it does where it was like nah, I'm on the I'm on the right I'm on the right path, like. Um, and I think that's what you got to keep in check and is this is what becomes a little difficult for people to keep in check because it's really easy to get lost in the sauce when everybody is praising everything you do. Yeah. Which the answer to that, right? Um, is that is wake up and be grateful every day. And that'll 
as long, I think that as long as you wake up and, you, and you're grateful for the opportunities you have and even for the for the bad stuff because of the growth that you're going to get from it, then I think you'll be all right. You'll be able to keep your ego your ego in check. How do you how do you pivot throughout the this journey of, of music, of songwriting, of entertainment? How do you pivot when everything is against you? How do you pivot in life when you don't get those accolades? You don't get that recognition. You've been putting years and years on work and you don't get the result that you've always wanted and, and you think you deserve at that moment. So how do you pivot through your journey like that? Well, I think that at that point, you know, you got you got two options, right? Like I said, again, you could either curl up in a corner right there and just feel sorry for yourself and cry yeah. because why is nothing working for me? Yeah. Or you could let a fucking fire burn up in you and, and, and then use that shit and, and, and just go harder. You know, there, you know, there's so many in-betweens, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, those are the two, what was, two real options you have. What was one point of your life where you you pivoted, where you felt like... You know what's crazy? One, I believe it's your uncle, um, um, Hector. Yeah. Right? So I go to this thing called Los Compositores, uh-huh. at the Mariachi Grill in the Valley. This is a long time ago. And I was like, you know, I, I think sometimes... We make things a little bit more difficult for ourselves, but it also consists on, like, the life that I was living then was very, like, heavily involved in the hood and the streets and all that. And then you're kind of like a somebody there, and then you go somewhere else where you're nobody. Mm. And that's kind of a hard pill to swallow, mm. you know, because your mind, and, and, and this is a, and this is a, your mind goes into, like, man, fuck that shit, I'm a G, and I'm going to do this, and, and it's like, no, that's literally you feeling sorry for yourself, my boy. Like, <laughs> like, like you're just being That's a, your ego trying to yeah, talk to yeah, yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's like, that. like, like, cortate ese rollo, you know? Yeah. Like, so I remember the first time I went to that event, you know, I walk in, and it's like now, right? Like now, if if, if, if me and you go to a certain event, and we probably know a lot of the people there, or we see each other, it's like, yo, no way. Yeah. And it feels good, you know, it's a conglomerate. But when nobody knows you, it's a whole different vibe. Don't right? be in the corner back there. Yeah. No one talking so, to me. So yeah, yeah. I remember walking into that room. And it was dim. And everybody's like, ah, oh, everybody's in the tables talking, having drinks. Yes, puro like compositor y arreglista. And, you know, people in the industry. And it's worse, too, because it's like these big-ass doors that you go through. And it's like very noticeable. Everybody, like, turn so everybody turns around to see a ver quien es. Like, yeah. they're all homies. He enters too, and it's like the whole room stops, right? And it gets quiet, and they go like this. And then, like a second later, ah, like, like, like nobody that, walked in, nobody much, walked right? In, yeah. So you have that's where you got to make a decision. Like, are you going to feel sorry for yourself and, and, and be mad? Or are you going to make a change, right? Because literally, the, 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 the definition of, of lunacy is to do the same thing over and over and expect a different outcome, Facts. right? So you got to make a change when the shit's not working for you. So I went in there and, 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 I, and I fought it. And, and there were so many things that happened that day that played a part in my career now. I remember I walked out of the room because it was almost like there was nowhere to sit. Y había mesas donde había, pero pues no me conocían so para que me dijeran, like, hey, siéntate aquí. Yeah. O sea, nadie me ofrecía donde sentarme ni nada. And again, you could get mad and be like, man, fuck all these people. Or you can ask yourself or, or, why. Or you could make a, a change. You know, yeah. you, 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 you could. So me salí para afuera un ratito yo because there was another little bar outside y me compré un trago para pa, pa agarrar ánimo, you know. Um, trip out. There's a guy that I met that day that's a really good friend of mine now and that has that has really helped me out in my career too. Ese día él salió también y yo le ofrecí un trago. Um, I, th- I thought he was a white guy because he looked white, you know. So I told him like, all right, la neta apenas tenía para mí. So I was like, I don't even know why I did that, yeah. pero me nació. Y el vato me contestó like in perfect Spanish, like, no lo echamos. Y dije, a la verga. La. <laughs> y ya lo conocí, pues he, he, he was mixed, you know. Yeah. Um. That happened, and I got a little more. Well, ya, ya conocía a alguien, you know. And I remember I went outside to smoke, smoke a J, and 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 I was outside. Y salió un compositor that I followed that he was he was really good too. Y me dice, oye Castro, el like, Simón. He's like, yo te sigo carnal en las redes y me saludó. Y luego, I don't know if he felt my energy, but he was like, eh, bueno, no, no, échale ganas, like no, 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 no dejes de. He was like, tú lo la traes, you know. He just like, so maybe I needed to hear that. Who knows if I would have left. Yeah, and just re- I've never been a quitter, but I also know when to take a step back and regroup. And I try not to do that because it almost feels close to quitting. Yeah. But sometimes I was feeling very like, man, this, I'm out of place right yeah, now. Like this is this may not be it. Yeah, so I go back in ultimately, and I'm just standing in the corner, you know, but thinking the whole time, reading the room, and 
and thinking of what change I need to make because it's not working. No, I la pena to keep going to these things. You, uh, you know, showing up is very important. But if you're showing up to be in the shadows, then are you really showing up? Yeah, that, that's exactly what we talk about. It's like we're only we're showing up where we know we can make a presence, we can make an impact, and where we're gonna get something out of it. If you already did the fucking, yeah, he's el esfuerzo de ir. Well, you know, show, make sure make sure that out. something is done. You make make yeah. sure that you get some kind of. Something out of it, and not in a negative way. Over like, oh, I need to get something out of everything. But yeah. But as far as like, so you don't go home and feeling like, damn, I just wasted my time. I just wasted my time, yeah. So yeah. what I did is that during the week, you know, I found out that Hector was the one that was doing these things, and I sent him an email, and I sent him three songs, and it was night and day the next week when I went. Like, it was so crazy that, I, and I stopped doing this now because <laughs> what I did was like, um, I walked in. And I seen your uncle get up and go like this to me, like, but I didn't think he was talking to me. So I did one of these, like, <laughs> so I don't do that no more because no matter what, fuck it, you know, be confident. Yeah, yeah. And then I went and, you know, he sat me down and, and they brought me some drinks. And and I, I even remember a guy coming up to me because so my friends in these places were always the valet guys, the meseros, the, one of the guys that I felt the most comfortable talking yeah, to. I can resonate with. Yeah, right. Which ended up being a blessing in disguise because these guys would work all the events. So when these people start seeing me, ya sentado, they also felt proud. Like, yeah. damn, this is the guy that was always outside talking to us or giving us the time of day. Yeah. If anything, I needed them more than they needed me because Ooh, I needed that to, part. To, to, to talk to somebody. Yeah. So then they all start coming up to me that day and like genuinely happy. The camera, the guy that's taking pictures, he comes, he's like, I'm a photo away. And I remember one of these came, one of these guys came and told me in my ear, um, "Acabas de ver tu vida cambiar," you know. Ooh. Like I don't know if that night I understood it as much because it was almost kind of like, "What the fuck is happening?" You know. Yeah. Like, but it's cool. But I, I've always been on some shit. Like when something works, I don't have the time to sit here and celebrate. I gotta plan my next move already. How can I follow up? Yeah, the follow up because yeah. I think that's where we. Well, we dropped the ball a lot of times with that, with the follow up. Mm -hmm. So, I went every every week after that, and every and every time I went there, and then like like you know, Hector me decía like, oh, echa tu rolas. And three weeks back to back, I sang songs, and who, they they used to have like special guest artists to go listen. And every week they asked for me. They were like, hey, what's up? With, the, with that guy's songs so these are the things that I mean that happen where at least it gives you a push to be like no I vamos I vamos it's, it's that little reassurance you know Cuando, when you're going through your life journey and this goes for every everybody going through that life journey you're working so hard but you're not getting that recognition love result that you know you deserve and you want you know God always gives you that here you go here's a little piece of grace mm -hmm. let me remind you what you're doing and you're doing it right I'm not going to give you everything just no, yet. No, no. But what are you going to do with this right here? Yeah. Let me see what you're going to do with that. Here you go. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do now? And this is like how you said. It's that little breather. I just, yeah. I can breathe now. You know what I mean? And, and that's the, you know, to piggyback off the follow-up, you can do great things right now, but how are you going to, what's the next thing? What's the next move? Are you going to sit and rejoice of this one moment you just did? Or mm -hmm. now I got to create two more, three more, four more. Not, I'm not a one-hit wonder. No, we we stay here. Yeah, the, and the thing is that that people think that it gets easier um, when you get when you get kind of popping, you know, when 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 people start acknowledging what you do, it only gets harder. Yeah, because now you don't have no gray area for mistakes. It gets smaller. That that area where yeah. you could have right. got away with certain things, ah, nobody's gonna notice it. Nah, now everybody's looking. Yeah, right now when no one's watching, you can mess up all you want, and no one gives a fuck. Mm -hmm. But the more fame you get, the bigger you get, that it gets smaller and, and it's, smaller. it's almost sometimes like they're they're waiting for you to, because some people literally get on some shit like, oh, why is everybody praising this guy? Why are they putting yeah. this guy in a pedestal? He's not perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. those people are literally waiting for the opportunity for them to be like, you see? You see, he wasn't that, you yeah. know? The hard part is to show up and for people to be like, you know, I think some of the greatest compliments that I've gotten in my life is when I meet people and me dicen, no, way, so and so, they, they spoke about you very well and they said this. Mm. Y, y te pusieron acá, wey, pero quedaron cortos. Like, now that I met you in person. <laughs> that right there is something that you got to grab, I think, and just like, kind of like, 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 yeah. but, 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 it, but it's also a big responsibility, you know? 
it's, it's, it's a big responsibility. And I think that the mistake we, we make a lot of times is that we don't see it like that. We take it for what it is, right? For like, oh, yeah, that's, that's dope that people. Yeah. But now you got to sit back and think like, okay, now there's a lot of younger kids that are looking at you and, and, um, and you are the blueprint to them. You are like mm. what is to follow for them. So like you're to a certain extent almost responsible for. Yeah, no, for because, that, right? because, you know, uh, I heard it yesterday. When you're an influencer, you're an influence to people, good or bad. You know what I mean? When they tell you, I want to be like you. Okay, what about me? Like there's good sides to me and there's bad sides to me. What about me is it that you want to be like? And I always take it like, I'm going to show you by my actions. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to show you the good and the bad sides to this. And I'm going to be real honest with myself mm -hmm. and real honest with, with the public. Because this is not just glitz and glamour. There's highs, there's lows. There's days where you get everything. And there's days where you get the shit and the stick. You get nothing. But I'm going to show you that mañana, cuando manesca, I still get up. And we got to get going again, once again. Oh, ahora no había nada? Fuck it. Tomorrow we come right back, right? Yeah. That's it. And it, and one thing that como de, quería hacer, I wanted to tell you since the beginning, is teniendo la sangre michoacana, la, la sangre mexicana. You know, cuan, cuantas veces nuestros padres no agarraron el resultado que querían. They didn't get the life that they wanted so hard, but they fucking busted their ass for. So, like, for you, growing up in también Michoacán, <laughs> now in the industry that you're in, this high that you're in right now, how does that play an effect into your life? Well, it, it keeps me grounded, you know? I mean, literally, literally, I just, I was over there for a month and like literally s stepping on that dirt, I felt it. Mm. I felt that shit. I felt like it was the perfect time to where I needed that in my life for this to not, para no dejar que se me crezca la cabeza, you know, like, like it was, you know, if you, it's almost like I said, like if, if you let, if you let and if you're in, 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 in connection with the universe and if you let it guide you and you don't, uh, it, sometimes it sounds like, like some weirdo <laughs> shit, you know? And it is what it is because not everybody's ready for it. Yeah, you know? that's it, the part. It, and it's not for everybody. Facts. But if you're in that part of your journey and, and you embrace it, it's going to take you where it needs to take you and it's not going to be easy, right? Because the road is not supposed to be easy. Mm. But yeah. but that path is, is, is going to be the one and you're in... And it gives you confidence. And the more that you believe in it, and you already, a ti ya no te la van a contar because tú ya lo viviste. Anybody can say whatever they want to say about it, but you know, you know. And yes, it's cool. You're still going to listen to advice and you're going to still take things in consider, con, to consideration. But you get, to, you get to this place when you're very comfortable with the person that you are and then you accept also when you're wrong and that you're able to like, going back to that to where you say like, man, influence, to influence people, you know, one of my biggest reliefs was like, you know, when a lot of the youngsters right there in the neighborhood, like they used to praise me sometimes for the wrong things mm. because of things that I had done in my past. That is what we look up to growing up like that. Yeah. Like you want to be like, you want to be a G, you know? Yeah. You want to be like those cool, those, you want to like, uh, one example that I give people is like when you're in high school, you have the nerds, then you have the cool kids, then you have the, the jocks, the jocks, the, then you have the bad kids. Uh -huh. No one looks up at the jocks. No one looks up at the nerds. Everybody looks up at, the guys yeah. that have every single body around them and knows everybody. Uh -huh. Twi turn of events, years later, 10 years after high school, what, where are we now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And, and you know, sometimes, it, unfortunately, people become a product of their environment. Um, you know, whether whatever household, like however their household looks like, maybe that's all they know. You know, maybe they don't. No, uh, you're completely right. They don't have no opportunity to, to become a student of, of the art. They don't have. You know, someone in their own family to look up to be like, yo, like, quiero ser como tú, como cre I mean, to, you just, just to grow up with a father and a mother at home. It's a blessing. That's already your, you, you, mm. you, you, you should be a certain amount of steps ahead of the game, you know, because yeah. I used to be a little bit judgmental when I was younger, as far as like some of my homies get me to see like, like disrespectful, yeah. because to me, that was, that was something that was not, not the norm to me. Yeah. Right. And to this day, they thank me for it, right? Because you era de los que, you know, de por sí, you would go to homies' houses y pues íbamos todos pelones y todos guandajones. And, you know, they didn't like that shit, right? But I was always accepted. Like, at all my friends' houses, I was, because of the way I spoke and I carried myself, right? Yeah. And, and, and I was, I had common courtesy. 
And sometimes I used to be like, man, what's up with these dumbass fools? Like they don't, they don't. But when I would go to their house for the first time, I would be like, oh, that's why. Like their house was, their homes were chaos. Yeah, you know. And also, I felt very blessed after that. So then I would teach them. I would be like, we would go somewhere and be like, ahorita que lleguemos, digan buenos días, you know, o buenas tardes. Si nos ofrecen algo de comer, o si por favor, o no gracias. You know, simple. Yeah. It goes a long way. It goes a very... A, a, yeah, when I see my some of the people I used to know talk crazy to their moms or dads, I'm like... You would be like, what? I'm like, ¿Dónde viene el putazo, güey? Porque <laughs> I... Even now, being older, I'll cuss here and there, and my mom's like, hey, don't say that. I'm like, oh. Yeah, yeah, no, it's always a respect thing, no matter how yeah. old you get, you know, and and um, it goes back to that, to the responsibility of it. Like, I remember the, the, the shift when I felt like I mean, it's kind of like I'm not asking these kids to, to try to be like me. Or, and, and it's almost like, what can I do about it? This is the circumstances and the environment that we are being, that we're being raised in. Mm -hmm. um, but I was like, nah, that's just me, like, taking the easy way out. So it was such a relief the day that I really sat there and told them, like, man, you guys really want to hear the real, the real version of those stories from, like, the guy that did it? Not from, like, you heard it from an uncle, from an older brother, from your older sister, yeah. like... I guarantee you they weren't there. Yeah. You know, they heard it also, right? And then it becomes legend. It becomes a fucking um, <laughs> the, a tall tale, you know? They, they tell the story, and then when they tell that person, then that person is yeah. going to try to reiterate the story a little bit better. That, and it's like, no. And at some point, because of ego, you just let it ride. It feels, you know, damn, they're painting me like a fucking like Paul Bunyan, you know? <laughs> um, but then at, once, once you grasp the whole responsibility in it, it starts not feeling good, and that's growth. You know, a lot of times when you feel something that is like this little guilt, and you can't figure it out. Like, man, why am I feeling? I didn't really. Yeah. Well, guess what, my boy, you becoming a man. Yeah. You know, and and when I started feeling like that, I was like, it's something that you can't hide. And it's funny. It's it's almost funny now, right? Because I tell everybody, like, it took me a whole lifetime to try to get these little motherfuckers out of my house, or like kicking it from in front of the house, like, because my parents would be tripping, you know. And yeah. then it went from like my older brother to me to my younger brothers, and then my little brother. And it was it was decades of this shit, right? And I get it now. Like, yeah. and I the day that I started telling them the truth, they all dispersed by themselves, because they wanted to hear the lie. They wanted to hear. They wanted me to glorify the shit. The perfect because, picture. Because that's what they were looking up to. They were looking up to that guy, right? But when I would tell them, like, I remember telling them one of the stories, and I was like, "Well, guys, want me to tell you what I was really doing? Yes, did I do what I did, and did I survive that incident the way I did? Yes. But it wasn't because I'm the bravest, most valiant motherfucker in the world." It was survival. It was like, but you know what I was doing right before that happened? I was kneeling under a motherfucking side of a car with tears coming out of my eyes because I didn't know if I was going to see my mom again or my pops or my little brothers. And then I, I followed up with a question to them, like, do you love your, your mother? Do you love? And everybody says yes, right? They even get offended when you ask them that question. Like, yeah, what the fuck? And I'd be like, no, you don't. Yeah. I'm like, you don't. You're just telling yourself that because it's the right thing to say. But do you when do you ever think about what position you're gonna put them in Ooh. with the way you're living? You know, Thanks. and that question they couldn't they couldn't they couldn't answer me most of the time. You know, yeah. so it was perfect though. It, it was a perfect f filter that I did at the time because there was a lot of them that I think lost the way they felt about me. Like, oh man, this was my hero because he was hard and he was yeah. like, but now, and, and, now uh... and, and, it, and I was okay with that. Because the ones that stuck around, they wanted to learn. And until this day, now they're good men. Now these guys have families and they're working. And when they see me and when they introduce me to the kids, they literally say, like, look, this is the guy that taught me this. And that's worth more, I think, than, than many accolades that you could gain in life. You know, like. So, singer, songwriter, right? You have stories for days because you've, you've lived a, a life that just, man. It made you who you are today. So do you think that being an artist, songwriter, does that just make you a great storyteller? Yeah. I mean, that's why you almost don't get one without the other, right? Because you have to have a story to tell to be a great storyteller. And um, and then you mix that in with the gift and with the work ethic. And I, I always say, I, I tell a lot of people this because I mentor and I, and I develop a lot of young artists. And... And I'm very honest with them because, you know, why am I going to sell them a dream? Why am I going to paint a picture that's, no les quiero dar para abajo, but I think that if I'm telling you what is the truth, and if you don't take it like, oh, man, 
yeah. and come on in. Then it's what? for you because if you still feel like oh, I, could, I could rock this out after what I told you, which is the, I'm just being honest with you. Yeah. Then yeah, then I think I think that the only thing that we need is to have a, a was nothing in this life is guaranteed other than fucking death and taxes, <laughs> right? But I think that the 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 goal is to put yourself in a position to have a fighting chance. You know? Yeah. So in order for you to, I think, get to that place, you need to be, yes, you got to be positive and all that stuff, but you also got to be um, realistic. And there's a pot, right? There's a pot that you've got to brew, right? And in that pot, there's so many things that need to go in it because you need to brew the perfect storm. Yeah. But the one thing that needs to be in that pot, no matter, because all our journeys are sometimes similar, but at the same time, our own, the one thing that cannot be missing in that pot is the work that you got to put in. No matter what else is in there, um, work needs to be an ingredient that cannot... The primary. That cannot be... Yeah. Not Without that, you can have everything else and... It's going to break. It's going to fall. Gonna it's break, like yeah. it's the foundation. You can create this enormous, successful thing, but if your foundation is not secure, not cannot withhold enough weight, and when I talk about that, that means through all the adversity, through all the highs and lows, like if you don't have that strong foundation, that shit going to break and fall. And For people, sure. as soon as it breaks and falls, they don't want to get back up or rebuild it. The yeah. rebuild stage is where no one wants to. Yeah. They said, oh, it's only this way, and, I, and I'm pa todo pa delante. Well, like, for example, in my case, I was noticed because of my work ethic before I was noticed because of my talent, right? So oh. I, start, I, start, I started getting my first opportunities where they didn't never really heard nothing that I did or where they weren't even sure... Pero miraban que no paraba. And that was enough for them to be like, hey, wait, pull up to this. Yeah. And I knew, like, this doesn't even really know what I do. But one thing that I would show up everywhere, and to this day I show up, it means, eres un pinche robo, güey, no mames, no paras, right? <laughs> yeah. And that to me is, a, is, a, is a, um, ¿cómo se le llama? Like, um, es un halago, you know, que me digan eso. Because, hey, vas por buen camino, the people are noticing the, the work that, that you're putting in. But I think that in order for you to develop a lot of these things, a strong foundation, you got to trust the process, right? And the process is very important. And I think with instant gratification, that's kind of where you risk not having that. And it's like, I always go back to like, to the analogy of like, you know, if, if, if you're an athlete, right? Yeah. And you're on the bench, you tienes unas pinches ganas, like put me in coach, put yeah. me in. And sometimes in your mind, you feel like you're better than the starter. Yeah. But the starter did what he needed to do to, to be there. Yeah. And you got to just sit there and wait your turn because the, the problem is that everybody wants to put in the game, but you're going to get it. You, you, you're going to, unless you're going to score a triple double or knock that motherfucker out the park or, yeah. or, 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 or score a fucking Hail Mary touchdown in the fucking, yeah. if you're not prepared to do that, then why are you crying for, for, for that opportunity just for your own ego, yeah. just for you? You know, so I think that it is very important to to every time you get one of those opportunities, you have to knock it out the park. Yeah, and, you get one minute, you get thirty minutes or one shot, bro. You better show up and show out because this this and moment we've seen it, yeah. and we've seen it in sports, right? Yeah, right? this moment can change your fucking life, right? Like the Andy Ruiz mm -hmm. when he was he was a, a sub into that fight. Everybody thought he was just gonna get his ass beat, and then bam, knocking out a world champion. And the, his life just changed from overnight. So it's just like, you you just never know when that will be. Like, you don't know if today's your big break or tomorrow. But you got to get to tomorrow in order to find out if that's what it is. And, again, how tying it back to how we said at the beginning, it just, if I were to tell you this is your journey, you're not going to want this. You got to go and figure that that is. Mm -hmm. what is. What is that called? That's life. It's going to have its highs and lows, but you got to be able to withstand the, the lows. Because you're going to get highs, and you may have more low moments than high moments, but those good moments are the ones that outweighs everything. Yeah, and, and, and going back to the redirecting of energy and embracing the hardships, it's like, it's almost you become like a a whole other type of person because it's like I, I caught myself being excited over difficulties at some point. <laughs> like on some weird shit, like, like, this is, like, yeah. like it's almost like, like I knew the growth that was coming from that. And it was sometimes when things are too good, it's like when, you, when, when you're that guy yeah. and you're that guy everywhere you go, it starts getting a little stagnant, you know? It I want to change. You're too close to, re, to, 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 
10 year cap right there yeah and that's just kind of like nah man i need to go places where i could still learn yeah and like and and i think that's um you think it's important to surround yourself with like highly <laughs> driven people also definitely because uh, uh, if you go into your social media you know i did my homework you know, you have a, a lot of pictures and, and videos with Leo Santa Cruz, mm -hmm. you know, working machine, mm -hmm. a champion, a guy that's family oriented, Mexican. You know, he's in a whole different industry, whole different sport. But the work ethic that they got, they got to go through a training cap of 90, yeah. 120 days for. And everything plays a part in, in your journey, like. Even if it has nothing to do with what you do, but like the similarities of, of the yeah. discipline and, and the and the work. And that's how you end up in a room full of, so I think that the level that's that's what the level up is, right? Yeah, yeah. The level up is that you start in a room where everybody has the same opportunities, the same everything. What are you gonna do to come out of there? I think that sometimes your talent is enough to get you out of that room. Yeah. Then it gets to a place where, well, everybody in here is made it out of it's that talented, place. Yeah. So everybody here, so what are you going to do here? Okay, from right here is my work ethic, right? Yeah. Boom. Then you get to a certain room where it was like, damn, everybody in this motherfucker wants it as bad as I do. And they wanted it since they were a kid. And they feel like they deserve it. And they work hard for it. Yeah. And how do you get out of this? And I remember thinking, what I thought was going to be the hardest one to get out of, to a certain extent, was the easiest one. Because at that one is all character. It has nothing to do with your talent or your work ethic anymore. It has to do with who you really are as a person. Nice. And and not to toot my own horn, but that one was like, oh, shit, I just got to be me right here. You know? Yeah. And then sometimes you go all the way back to that, to being like, oh, shit, me is what works. And that's when I decided that I was okay with not making it being me, but I was not okay with not making it not being me. You know, like trying to be somebody else or try yeah. to fit into something else. And then imagine if that doesn't work and you're going to go your whole life thinking, what if I would have gave myself a shot? What if I would have bet on myself? Yeah. And I didn't want to go through that, you know? Like, I, th that's one thing that I learned how to how to make decisions a little easier for me is to know what I could live with in the future and what I can't. And yeah. based on that, I'm able to be like, all right, well, this is the route I'm yeah. going to go, you know? Um, just kind of like wanted to emphasize, like, how's that relationship with, like, Leo Santa Cruz? It's like, um, I feel that, like you guys are. That, that food, that food. You know what? It's like, there's a lot of people that would tell me that I wasn't going to make it in this industry because there was so much fakeness and so much blah, blah, blah. That never scared me because I always thought this. In the streets, in school, at a job site, you gravitate towards people that are more like you, mm -hmm. right? If you're a piece of shit, you're going to hang around with all the pieces of shit. Yeah. If you're a, a, a whatever guy that's into this, you're going to hang out with those guys. Yeah. I always found a group of people that that you know to me that whole you know the your character says everything about you you know like you're not a liar you know you're yeah. you're, you're a stand-up dude like I, I, that's the people that i felt the most comfortable with so i think that eventually like where i'm at right now for example and is is the truth bad energy doesn't fucking come around me no more like it, it's just it gets stopped at the door like not even by me it's like if you're my friend right and you're right there and you see that this guy's on some weird shit some weird energy, you're gonna be like hey bro don't bring that shit around bobby like you know yeah. right so that's a fucking blessed position to be in but it takes you going through a room full of <laughs> negative energy yeah. and to grow out of there to where every all of us that are coming out of there are meeting here and now we're like so now it's all good, and that's kind of how I met Leo. That's how I met a lot of the guys that are my friends now, that we were on the same page already. Mm. So it's almost like a it's a breather when you run it because it's something like where it's like, like um, one of my good friends, you know, like in the industry, Javi Rios, he does um Picolandia and all that. You know, he has Alex Favela that's oh, yeah. blowing up with yeah, that song yeah. right now. They're really good friends of mine for years, and I always think about the story about when I, I met him. I met him at a Junta de Promotores. Same story. Where I'm right there with my little bottle trying to sit down somewhere, you know, just <laughs> just to be to to be cool about it. Yeah. But since nobody really knows me, you know, I you know I asientos, you know, I mensas, I'm just kinda just like and it could get really awkward, you know. You're just that you're just that weird guy with the bottle. Yeah, and then the, the <laughs> homie he, he's sitting by himself and he goes like this, like like you know yeah. and I'm like, You sure? Like, yeah. We had a dope ass conversation that, that whole night. And things happen when they need to happen because this was during a time where people were trying to convince me that the industry was full of fucking like um, sharks and yeah. y la gente no más esto y lo otro y que no es que ahí va a estar cabrón. 
And I always believe, like, nah, man, it's, 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 it's who you are, too. Yeah. It's what you gravitate towards and what gravitates towards you. Excellent. And there's good people everywhere. You just got to find them. You know, you just got to yeah. find you just got to find each other. And I think it was the same thing with Leo, a really good friend of mine that's like my business partner now. I always tripped out on him because for a long time he didn't have a job, but just he was helping everybody. He helped everybody in any way. And that was his job, but like he wasn't getting paid for it, right? <laughs> yeah. And um, and then one day when he finally got a job with Leo, it was really just doing what he had always been doing, just being servicial. But now he, and I thought like you know that that I could see how that could happen, you know? Yeah. If you're a good person and you just not that's por vencido and you not that's para abajo like break. with the whole, you're gonna you know right? So he took me to the gym one day with them. Y luego pues son 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 paisanos también, you know, michoacanos. So that's, you know, I, we're a little, uh, sometimes you're a little bit biased, you know, when it comes to that. Like, hey, at least you give the person a, a, a more of a, of a first shot. Yeah. So I remember I met his dad the first time. The first time I met Leo, what blew my mind was that this guy was already a champion. You know, he was like, and he's training in the gym and we're in this little office thing that's right there in the gym where his dad used to be chilling. And I used to kick it with his dad because his dad just took a liking to me immediately. Like, like he told my homie, like, hey, este muchacho dice, La mejor persona que me has traído aquí. You know? And I never I never say these things as a, like a like a, a showing off thing. I, I say the things because it's earned. Yeah. And because it it's that's, that's what we should that's what we should um that's what we should shoot shoot for to be that type of person, you know, que cabes donde quiera, especially in business. The fact that you are able to be in rooms where not everybody can be in because of the trust, because you're a trustworthy person. That, that is beneficial to you, you yeah know? man that's so, crazy with that with that type of energy and like i've told uh chris shout out sour apple you know <laughs> um put us in the room and we'll be able to stay in there yeah and that's key because we could put you in every room and i've seen it right with managing artists with all that you could give them the key you know you could sit them everywhere where they're gonna have a fighting fucking chance, more than anybody else because you're already vouching for them yeah and then they just they just don't, don't cut it. it in them you know don't yeah. got it in them and that's what happened with like Leo, but what, what where I knew that I was around, and it's almost like that's the only thing I want to where I'm at now. I'm only around good people, you know. Have to be. And um, he came in the room, right? So everybody gets up like, "Hey, champ," you know, porque ya no había asientos, like. And he's like, no. and he sits down on the floor, you know. And I'm looking at him like this guy is a world champion, you know. So if that's not humbling. You know, like, or like at least to put that in your head to be like, this is the way yeah. to be like. And then another the next day, you know, he goes outside to do like a little, like a little like shadow boxing outside. And then you got, you got like a FedEx or UPS or one of those delivery services. And the guy's bringing stuff, but it's a lot of stuff. And then Leo walks in with like big ass boxes helping the guy. <laughs> and everybody tells him like, bro, there's like a million guys here to help. All you have to do is call. And he'd be like, no, nah, okay. you know, yeah. so. This is why, like, I've been able to connect with, with, I, I think that's got to be one of the biggest blessings in life to, to, um, attract that energy and vice and vice versa to, yeah, you to gravitate towards those type of people and then gravitate towards you. You will attract the people that are just like you, right? That are driven, mm-hmm. that are motivated, that are humble, that you're hardworking, right? Like, again, you're, when you have a team, but, one thinks he's better than the other. Like, it doesn't work like that. You know what I mean? Like, everybody here is, instead of standing one in front of the other, no, no, we're standing right next to each other. Well, that, that the team, that's what, that, the hardest part, I think, is finding that team. Yeah. Right? Because, For sure. Because it could, be, it could be five of us and four of us could be locked in, but you're only as strong as your weakest link. Yeah. Right? So not until that hand is full and everybody's willing to pay, play whatever position, you know, like, me right now with my with, with, with um my record label, right? It looks like we have a hundred workers, right? And it's really like three of us that are willing to do whatever we gotta do. Yeah. And yes, we have a lot of help from our yeah. all of us have our you know, the people that, that are willing to 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 um to ride with us. But that was the biggest proof to me that because I had situations where I had a thousand people around me, you know, and that seemed like, Oh, this is it. This is a team like but no, because if you have a thousand people, but only two are willing to put in the yeah, energy and bro, the work, then, then if anything, you're going backwards. You it's know? like uh, asking asking yourself in the position you're in, what's your job title? Everything. 
<laughs> every position there is, I filled it in. And it goes back to that Leo thing. You know, like, I, the reason why these things, sometimes you need to see them is because sometimes you do ask yourself, because I was always that guy. To me, it was like I was never too big to play any role in my team. Yeah. And even if my team thought I was too big, where they were like, no, wait, do you know what's that? Nah, no, 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 You know, I'm, yeah. I, I got this shit. And, um, and it look, you don't do it to look good, but then it, is, it ends up becoming a really good thing because then it looks good and, and you didn't plan it for it to be like that. Yeah. And that's a story of my life. Like, I do things because that's how I get down. And then the way the people receive it or see it from the outside, it ends up working out for me. But it almost has to be like that. It has to be organic because anything that you do with wanting to receive back, yeah, you, you're, you're already kind of fucking up your your, your program right there. Yeah, like when you're, you have to do it with the right intentions and yeah. knowing that, you know, you're going to get something good out of this and you hope for it. But even if you don't get nothing from it or something negative, hey, it, that's just the way this shit's supposed to be. Like, well, well, this is the way I see that. And, and, and see, the, the, whole, the whole thing about like, about like seeing things, um, for the value instead of for like seeing them in a negative way or like, man, why does this happen to me? The way I see it is like we plant seeds, right? Our yeah. whole life. Plant seeds everywhere you go. Plant a hundred seeds. Yeah. Y más te dan dos. Back. But those two are worth those hundred because those 97, whatever that you lost, 98, yeah. is cool because you learned. Yeah. You learned that, okay, this wasn't a good one. This wasn't a good seed. This wasn't a good seed. That's the reason why. And it's cool, you know, like, yeah. so... At the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's, it, it's worth it. And, and 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 then at the end, to keep it even more simple, well, you know why you do it for. You know you know why you did and it you can't for. Lose, and you cannot lose sight of that. And that's enough. To me, a lot of times when I did something and if it, nothing came back from it or if even si ni se agradeció, no pasa nada. Yeah, I know I, where it came I, from. I do it for me. I do it because of how it makes me feel, not because of what, what I'm going to get back from it, right? Yeah. I have a kid that, that he's a very talented kid in the industry right now. His mom approached me one day and she was like, Oiga, Bobby, ¿usted por qué está buena gente? ¿Por qué a toda la gente le ayuda? Y le, y le, y a veces, pues yo miro que, pues no lo, no, they don't even, and I just smiled and I was like, well, I don't know if I'm that good of a person, but maybe I figured out what it gives me back without me asking for it, right? Like, as far yeah. as the universe, I was like, I know what I put out. I was like, now don't get it twisted. I was like, you can't come in with that mentality. I was like, oh, I'm going to just help all over this motherfucker so that the universe can pay me back one day. That's not the way it works, you know? No, hell you, no. You, you got to do it porque te nace. But I'll be lying to you if I haven't seen the blessings that it brings. So at that point, I think it's an agreement between you and the universe, God, you know, however you want to call it. I think that's an yeah. agreement. And I think that that's when things start aligning. See, because um, I'm not going to get too deep into this, but we live in chaos, right? Most of us. Mm -hmm. Because of wanting the things that we just want because we want them without wanting to work for them. Yeah. That's not how it works because everything is a process, right? Everything in this universe works as a process. The planets are aligned. The, everything is a process to it. But we want to fucking just go from here to here, back here. And it's like, oh, shit, let me go here now. And and without order, there is chaos. Yeah. Right? So I think that when you understand that and when you're willing to work and to go through whatever you have to work, work, Towards getting, towards reaching your goal, yeah, I think that things start aligning. Yeah, for you, you know, because there's a respect there. There's a respect for everything at that at that point. Got to be humble at the end of the day. Yeah, man, you're around a lot of people. You work with amazing people. You your trajectoria has been your resume is just incredible. Uh, think about this question and kind of similar to what Pepe had asked previous week, but. What artist would you have loved to work with that is dead or alive? Or both? Mm, I think that as far as like what, what I feed off of, like like I feed off of creating and, and, yeah. and, and working on new things. So there's there's many. But what comes to mind immediately, and it's probably people would never even guess. Is, ah, maybe yes. Uh, Cornelio Reina. And he's not the biggest, and, he, and you would probably expect like a Juanga, right? Or like a, yeah. which is definitely there too. Yeah. And and I'm heavily inspired by us. I could name like the four or five people that I'm the heaviest inspired by. But there's something about that guy. Like even like last night, right? I, I show like my most intricate stuff, and it's very pretty and it's very well 
made and people love it and they're like, fuck, you write like a fucking poet. And then I show some shit that's more así de, 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 de tomarte un pinche trago y de, y de sentimiento. And it's like, it's liked equally or more sometimes than my more, into, because I think that I put all my soul into that. And that is heavily influenced by Cornelio and Jose Alfredo Jimenez. Jesus. And those guys, when you listen to their stuff, and me, obviously, as a student of the game, like, their shit is real. Like, there's nothing that... You could listen to those guys' songs and know, like, man, these dudes were drunk when they were writing this <laughs> shit and really going through this como, shit, you know? Como cual canción te, te nace was to the head? Um, por ejemplo, como... I think one of the first ones that I learned from Cornelio was, like, um, Tú vendrás a curar las heridas Que otro amor me ha dejado Corriendo, me caíste como algo del cielo que hace mucho yo estaba esperando. Tú llegaste en el mismo momento en que yo me encontraba llorando. Right, like, so this, I think that him and, and Jose Alfredo, to me, they both have that. They have that bohemio, that yeah. real, and, and that's what I consider myself, like, like, yo soy bohemio y parrandero, you know? Borracho y trovador, <laughs> like, like I come from that that like from that, both sides. That is kind of like the era that I was the most inspired by, which was before my time. But I was just lucky that that I come from a household that just played all of that all what, the time. Uh, what do you have? How you said right now when you're writing and and resembling like their style. ¿Cuál, can, cuál verso, cuál canción tú escribiste? Like that probably not even out. Uh, you know what? It's crazy that you mentioned that because just last night I was in a session and we had this conversation, right? Because yeah. they were like, how do you, how are you so versatile in the way I could write a country song, I could write una balada, este, un, un bolero. And then my stuff sounds like that it comes from those times, right? But it's like, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Wonder Years, but this guy was raised by his TV. You know, like, so like his, it, it's an old, it's an old show. <laughs> Tell me how old you are without telling me how old you are, you know? <laughs> it's an old show, but this kid, he like pretty much grew up watching sitcoms so his life is based on everything you learn from that yeah so that's kind of me with music you know like mm -hmm. i listen to everything he said me pegó un poquito de todo like like i i'm able to write like the era i could put myself in that in that time almost but i updated a little bit obviously because of the time yeah so yesterday when i had the conversation when they were like you know it's crazy how you write these pretty ass songs and then you go back to some fucking drinking music and it's like fuck i don't know what's better right So I showed this piece of a song where I was like, I think this was going to show, these are the songs that show how heavily influenced I am by Cornelio. Uh -huh. And it says, um, Entre tristeza y coraje, lágrimas de sangre y un corazón mal herido. Entre botellas de vino, te perdono y te maldigo, pero ahora como te olvido. Hoy que el alma se me parte en mil pedazos por quererte como a nadie había querido. Qué cruel ha sido el destino si no fuiste para mí porque te puso en mi camino. Right, so... Hold on, let me call her food. Hold on. That was crazy. That was crazy. So, so... I love the shit, you know, and I have fun yeah. with it. And I think that it has to be like that. It I has that, to, bro. I, I think that, um... You, there, there's no, there's no other way. But eso digo que tienes que estar loco. You know, you have to be. No, a you do. Bit, you have to be a little bit on the crazy side to even believe. And and we had that conversation uh, uh, two weeks ago, where like you, you really have to be insane <laughs> to go into a, an industry in your own passion because, bro, people are gonna call you crazy. People are gonna tell you it's not gonna work. People are gonna tell you, bro, it's not paying off. They're gonna give you every fucking reason why to quit and stop, but. Very few will give you the reason why to continue. You know what I mean? And that's how you go back to those. I appreciate those people that said, bro, I believe in this. I believe in you. And that's why it's so important to believe in yourself. As cliche as that sounds. Yeah. It, you have to believe in yourself more than any. You cannot even, even if nobody believes in you, believe in yourself. And that's all you need. You know, you should never expect others to believe because there's something inside of you that's telling you like. Yeah. That, you know, you know, and that it's like, for example, I've been doing this for so long where things have turned to where, like, now motherfuckers that are doing this look like me and dress like me. But in my time, that shit was unheard of. Yeah. So you could imagine how crazy, how lonely that road was for me. 
right? Because everybody would tell me that it wasn't going to work. And especially because I look like this, but I was doing shit like that that I just showed you. And it was just like, how does that, how even, does that go? Yeah. How does that even work? And I'm like, well, because I'm both, you know, I am the mountains of Michoacan and I am the streets of South Central LA. And I lived both of those heavily involved, you know? Yeah. So I, it is what it is, you know? And, you know, now you see it's, it's like, I, I'm going to be honest. I wasn't sure if it would ever be that because it was so frowned upon. You know, when I was that dude, when I was a dude showing up with Jays and with Chucks and and, and the, imagine how they were looking at me back then. Like, <laughs> there was nobody showing up with no white t-shirts with no Dodger hats. You know, that shit was completely just you, not. You were what, what you can call the outsider of a, out of place. Uh-huh. You were technically out of place. You were, out of dress, place. You were dressed I, different. But it was, it, it, I would be excited because to me, being the underdog has always been like mm. a, a, something that I embraced. Yeah, it's know? like people don't expect anything from me. Like, I, yeah, that's good. Exactly. I like, love it. Like right before I got signed to Sony, when I, when I was signed to Sony, I went to meet um, with a lawyer. You know, one of the lawyers, and 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 you know, these a lot of these people, I've I've become really good friends of them, even though it started off. That's and business. that's the best. That's almost sometimes the best friendship, even when it starts off a little rocky, you know, because <laughs> this guy told me in my face and, and I've heard this many times. And like I say, you got to You got to use that as gas. Yeah. You know, you got to use that as gas instead of using it to fucking go somewhere and, and, and feel sorry for yourself. So I met up with this dude and he tells me in my face and I appreciate honesty, you know, and, and I yeah. appreciate a man that could tell you like right here instead of going out somewhere and telling it to somebody, somebody else, else and then coming back. Yeah. So it was like. Oh, so you're Bobby Castro, huh? He's like, you know, everybody speaks about you being the this 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 messiah of music and the say saver of music and and da 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 and this genius. But I'll be honest, bro, I don't see it, <laughs> right? And I smiled and I told him, I fucking love that shit. I was like, cause you're giving me nothing but lane, yeah. you know, by you not expecting nothing from me or not believing that I'm that shit, I could probably just do a quarter of what I do and you'll be impressed. And I remember he looked at me and he was like, what the fuck? Like, he was not expecting that answer. Yeah. So to me, it's even better if 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 you, because I know what I'm going to do. I know what I do, you know, and, I, and I'm confident in what I do. Nice. And I know that if you're not, if you're, if you're expecting something else, you're going you're gonna to get a rude awakening. <laughs> that guy fucking loves me now. It's like, and he's probably the biggest lawyer in the industry. Shit. And he pulls me anywhere he's at. Why oh, he's here. Like and that that my relationship with him started with him telling me that he didn't fucking see it. And, and so esa la esa la pregunta right there. How do you do you believe in having real friends and how do you characterize friends? How do you know when they're friends? I think that is something that is hundred percent earned because if it's not earned, you will never know if it's real. You know, and 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 I think that if you have. There's sometimes that you 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 break them down. Maybe they weren't that from the gate. Maybe it was something that was more the, the conveniencia. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that, does, that doesn't make or break the deal for me because sometimes I see the good in that person and I see that he's driven to do that because because of life. Yeah. And I and, and, and it gives me an opportunity to teach. It gives me an opportunity to be like, okay, at the end of this, at the end of this, whatever it is that we're doing. This person is gonna see, and, it, and it's gonna be better for him, and it's gonna better his life. Going back to that, I don't do it out of convenience, but I know the blessings that those type of things bring me. And if it doesn't bring me nothing back, then I know the good that I did, and I'm and I'm cool with that. It does something for me here, you know. Yeah, but it, it living living life with without no fucking regret, dude. Like the whole that's the key. that's that's yeah. what I that's what I decided very early in my life I, I i was ever really i was always really bad at the whole line and being dishonest <laughs> and and having to keep up with that shit like yeah. i couldn't understand how people could do it because my gut speaks to me like a motherfucker like and this is our this is our biggest alarm system that we have is our gut mm-hmm. you know even when this motherfucker and this motherfucker are not yeah they have their own agenda you know, yeah, your intuition tells you, but bro, your like, gut is the one that is gonna forever be like, fuck your heart and your brain. Like, you know, like, bro, you I, know, I'm, I'm telling you, yeah, you know, fuck I'm warning, yeah, I'm warning you. It's because you know, especially right now in this generation that we're in, is just, ah, oh, dude, you know what? I could have done. Well, why, bro? Why do you live in that fucking what if? In, in that I could have, in yeah, that I could have, I should have, or the regret, like. No, that and that's where it goes back to being around those type of friends and those type of people that are out there doing it that. They're taking every risk possible to make their dreams happen. 
just the same way as you are. So if you have five people that are goal getters, then you're gonna be that six. But if you're around, it's, it's about what you're around too, because I think it played a big part that I was raised around really stand up men, like guys that wouldn't fucking lie to save their fucking lives. Yeah. And and as much as I thought sometimes, like, damn, that's difficult to be that, like, or to live up to that. When I caught myself just kind of just naturally becoming that, what well, has to do with me being around that, you know, being what, because something you become what you see. So how do you, but how do you make that, that decision to not fall into the environment and be only stay there and to open your wings and fly into well, something greater? I, for years as a youngster, I, I, I went back and forth on the whole, like, you're a product of your environment. And then like, nah, man, puro pedo. That's just an excuse. Yeah. Like, there's many people that come from the same environment that, that did really good for themselves, you know? And then I would go back and forth depending on my on my circumstances, right? But you can't do that. You can't base it on just. So at one point, I I realized that a lot of things in life are not just one or the other. It's 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 a it's kind of a hybrid thing that you got to create, and it's, it's it's a balance. And I think that it all plays a part, right? Yes, the environment and the opportunities or lack thereof yeah. can create can it creates a monster sometimes, you know. But it's also if you're a, if you're already a certain type of person, that's who you are, that's and it's either you're gonna fight it or you're gonna embrace it, you know. And that, yeah. that, I think that's the decision that you gotta make. You, you can't hide who you really are, dog. Like at all, mm-hmm. you can pretend, you can you can fake it, you can fake the fun to be with this person or that person. But at the end of the day, when you're under the fucking light, your real colors will show. And, and I think the one of the most important parts of becoming a man is that you know when we're young, we fall into peer pressure and all that bullshit because of that. Yeah, because you're just in a certain you know, but por quedar bien, and to be a part of something as opposed to just standing your ground and being like, you know what, I ain't with that shit, or you know what, I'm gonna do this shit, or like, hey, miras algo and then like, man, I want to go help, but I don't know how it's gonna be frowned upon, and then it goes back, it goes back to 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 me living these two lives, like in Michoacan, for example. What part of Michoacan? For everybody to know um, now. It's, it's un ranchito ahí cerquita de Zamora, Michoacan. You know, it's the fucking in the top, literally like in the top of a mountain, right? Um, so right there, if, if, if when I was a kid, if I was just walking with my friends to do whatever we're gonna do, y si don whoever se le ve caído ahí una 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 un este un cerco de piedra or or un falsete que se le and he's right there struggling, we would all go over there immediately like second nature, ayudar. Just anybody that you see doing anything, you pull up like, hey, ¿qué onda, compa? Ayuda, Simón. So like, it was it was nothing. Yeah. Those things se pierden acá. Mm. So over here you're with a group of friends and then it's like you see somebody struggling and you want to go help but you don't want to you're gonna get clowned almost. Like yeah. no mama si tu que pinche ma, mother Teresa, you know, like <laughs> like and, and and I think that you gotta hold your ground when it comes to that. And it was something that I was maybe for a time there I did get lost in the sauce when it comes to that shit too. But I, I came back really quick to my senses to like, you know what? This is who I am. And the great thing about that is then I started seeing people started trying to be more like me than than the opposite than me trying to fit in with them yeah. like I would do this shit because of the way I was raised and then these people would just kind of not do it because of the same reasons because and when they would see me do it there's another thing about why it's important I think to create a certain amount of, of respect and value for yourself because then your words mean more to be able to tell a kid like like if they think you're the coolest motherfucker in the world, then you could change their mind like this to do good. To instead of like, no, mami, somebody, ¿dónde valiendo verga ahí, güey? Yeah. You look up to me, bro. yeah, of course. And sometimes they they believe your word more than their own parents or family. Most of the time. <laughs> Most, of the, Most time. of the time. Like if LeBron James came to tell me something, I believe him. <laughs> be like, <laughs> even though your mom just told yeah. you the same shit. And it is, that's the funniest shit is that you be hearing these fucking sayings from the closest people, but you ain't gonna listen. You listen to the random people, the random person that has told you over there. You're like, damn, fool, that's crazy, motherfucker. They've been telling you this. It's just the me- the message has always been there, but the messenger was wrong. Yeah, and, you know what yeah. I mean. So you know, we we don't want to listen to our parents for the longest time. Why? Because we, ah, oh, you don't understand. You don't yeah. understand. And you, you feel like they're it. just attacking you and they're not letting you live your life. And you, yeah. and at the end of the day, is 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 dumb shit. You know, but it's part of growing up, nice. and it's like you're just. You're feeling attacked and going back to that. Most of that shit, the root of it is self-pity. Mm-hmm. You know, the root of all that shit is self-pity. And I think that that is what holds you back from becoming who you need to become for the longest. Because it's really easy to just feel sorry for yourself about shit. As opposed to like making a change or like 
or like standing up to the shit where it was your fucking mistake. You know, it was yeah. not the world against you. It's you literally did some dumb shit, you know, and you're being yeah. reprimanded for it. Mm. And take it like a fucking man and grow from it. You know, yeah, you did. You made the action. Now live with the consequence. Mm-hmm. And that's what a lot of people don't like. They don't like every time I've, I've said it with this before, but every time I make an action, I already made amends with the repercussions, exactly. good or you bad, good or bad. So it's like it's not a it's not a surprise when when something comes up because you know what at the end of the, at the same time it's just um, it's just I made it, bro. Like you well, know, it, 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 it goes back to like earlier when we said about picking your battles. You know, um, picking your battles means that. Make your decision based on are you willing to deal with the consequences of that decision? Facts. You know, and if you, you know you can't, then then go another route. Mm-hmm. And if you're okay with like, you know what, if this doesn't work, am I going to be able to recover from this decision? You know, yeah. am, 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 am I willing to stand up and accept my error or my mistake if I make this decision and it's not the one? And if you feel in your gut that you can, then I think that that should really help you make yeah. that decision, you know? Facts. Um, la, la, the whole conversation has been, man, everybody getting to know this this person outside of everything that has, like, this seed has been planted years ago, and now people are seeing the fruits of it. Now people are seeing the flowers out of all the storms that had to come through it. So you're big on giving game and, and working on people, helping them out, because you're as he is. So if you can give game to those youngsters that are coming up in the industry, um, what's like the best piece of advice that you can give them? Bet on yourself. You know, bet on yourself because like I said, um, to live with the regret of not knowing if you would have worked as opposed to have to pretend to be something else to make it, I don't think that that shit is that sweet, you know? Yeah. And, um, and also is to know what, why, why you're doing this for. It's like, you know, I accepted a long time ago that I, 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 the reason, you know, the finish line was there. I saw the finish line many times in my career. And if I just wanted riches and fame, I could have probably had that a long time ago. And I was, I was handed papers and I could have just signed. But I was always looking for the legacy package. And that's something like one of those things that you can't lie to yourself about. You know, like once I would ask for that, everything would erase. And it was like, oh, no, then your road is that one, which is a treacherous one. But I would just start walking towards that way immediately because you need to ask yourself that. Like, why are you doing this for? You know, like to me, shit, the journey is the important part. I'm, so, to be honest, sometimes reaching that, f- that, that, that finish line gets a little scary to me because this is what I, this is what I know. This is all I know. This is what I've been doing my whole life. And I was never okay with just doing it to to be popping or to be rich and famous and to nah like I it's it goes way deeper than that to me I like 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 I said like and then it all happened you know once you ask for the legacy package everything erases all the finish lines everything yeah. uh, all the accolades is like oh you want that yeah. check this out what, that's what, your road what makes you rich. I think that the things that make you rich, money can't buy, right? And it's one of the things is the way my name is spoken or the the way my name is spoken in rooms that I'm not in, that's got to be, that's got to be as a man, as a human being, that's got to be one of the, one of the dopest things, you know, one of the richest is like you lived your life honorably, you know what I mean? And, and to become that dude that, that as a kid, you knew you wanted to be, but you thought, fuck, it's, it's going to be a long road, you know, and how do yeah. you even do that? Like, especially in the circumstances that I was in. Um, but it stems back from that. It stems back from that little kid wanting it so bad that that manifestation is the greatest of all because that is very pure. Yes. You know, that is like literally like used to pray for the shit. Like, I just want an opportunity. I'm not asking for nothing else. Yes. Just, just, Give me an opportunity and I'm willing to do everything I have to do and work as hard as I have to and give back as much as I have to for it. And I guess I just had that shit. I, just, I, I had that shit my whole life. And and then when you harness that, I think that's what I'm going to say. What's the, what is your deepest fear? Or do you have one? 
Um, I think we all have fears, but I've learned that you know how they there, there's some things that people say like, oh, you gotta, you gotta. I don't think it's, it's true for all of us, right? I think that I grab my fears and I tuck them into a motherfucking thing and I throw them all the way in the back in the trash bin in my computer, <laughs> you know, because I feel that sometimes there is fear that can help you move, but there's things in life like certain traumas and certain things that not, they don't do nothing for you. Yeah. You know, so I rather like, I think that fear is too close to doubt. Oh. And I think that I've fucking got rid of all doubt. Out of my head. A long time ago. You know? Um, what would, what do you want to be remembered for? What is, what is your legacy look like? Um, well, I'll say this. I'll say that, and I've told this to everybody, like, even though with a little bit of accolades that I have in my career that I'm, I'm very grateful for, you know, and I will never like be like, ah, it's whatever. It's not because it, it, you know, it took a lot of work, but my biggest flex is that I've been able to save some lives, that I've been able to to redirect lives, that I've been able to help people, that I that I've had people tell their kids like, look, this is the guy that that told me this or that did this for me or that taught me manners or that. That's priceless. You know, that's going mm-hmm. back to that. That's what makes you rich. Mm-hmm. You know, like that is almost besides this whole music thing. You yeah. know, like it feels great for people to acknowledge my talent and what I do in this, but none of that is greater than that. Yeah, you know. The, um, my last question, and I think this is just, it's a good one. What do you tell that eight-year-old Bobby? Um, you worked. You, you works like, like, because there was so much, there was doubt at that time. There was other things that was like, man, because of my, the lack of my opportunities, because I'm fucking busted and I got rips in my fucking pants and in my shoes and I wanted to to look better and to feel better, but because I just just to be listened to, because nobody turns around and looks at you when you when you when you when you're like that. But I would tell him like no no no, no. this is the guy. What's here is is what counts. Not not all that other shit. Just be you. Do you and bet on yourself always. You know. Mandatory man. Como dijimos another day in the message, bro. That Micho Campa al mundo. That's right. This is. And for a lot of people, they'd be like, "Oh, this is the this is the, the top, this is the top of the mountain." Well, it's the the bottom of the mountain to the next big one. That's exactly what it is. That's 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 that's, that's I think what needs to be understood as far as like trying to reach your destination is that you know there are some people that sometimes felt a little bit a certain way because I wasn't so willing to celebrate certain victories, and they felt a little bit like, "Damn, do you are you not grateful?" Like, man, I'm grateful every motherfucking day, but I know that making it. Out of this phase is I'm starting at the bottom as the next one, and I have no time to waste. Yeah, you know, as a matter of fact, every step up you have less time to waste, and you got to go hard because all eyes are on you. So, yeah, I mean, th- the thing is that you should never want to stop growing. You should never want to stop learning. Like, yeah. I think that day that that's what if you if there's a fear is that I think I do have that fear, like the fear of 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 there not being no more nowhere else to go. Yes. Because how you said, you know, you're reaching the, the finish line at that point, and when you pour your heart, your soul, your mind, your body into one thing, and you know it's almost coming to an end, it's like, all right, what do I do? How yeah. can I maneuver yeah, it? Nah, like, that's, that's, like, oh, what do you see yourself doing? Like, I don't know. I don't yeah. know about well, that it's like, you know, everybody tells me to rest. Man, get some rest, bro. Like, no para, no para. You work too hard, bro. And then the day that I'm... I'm like, no, nah, I can't. Like, this is what I do. Like, yeah. this is what makes me happy. It's not just my job. You know, it's like I would do this if it was still not giving me shit because I didn't get a penny out of it for my whole life, damn near. You know? Yeah. And, and and I think that that is the key for me. As far as how I create, I still create like if it's just for me, you know? Like you said at the beginning, you create to impress that eight-year-old you. Yeah. That's, that's the only dude that I care about impressing. Like, that's the only guy that I want to be proud of me, you know? God damn, bro. Bobby, I appreciate you for, for giving us your time for the last almost two hours. That Again, the short span, shout out how we we said earlier, because Chris put us in a room, you know, and someone at your standard and, and your position right now, again, it's up to us to be able to stay in there. 
And I tell everybody, you know, sometimes, bro, you got to go into a room. Don't expect anything. But do your part and, and make, you know, get to know people. Mm-hmm. Make relationships outside of these lights, outside of the cameras, outside of social media. Our time here is so short yeah. to not to not learn, to not live, to not meet new people. Like, I love that shit. I love I love meeting new people and 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 just learning knowing their story and and our similarities and our differences and and all that shit and then going back to that to that to that planting seeds and to and to giving and then and then not expecting anything back but like going even with Chris right Chris was one of those kids that used to just sit there and I used <laughs> to just be doing my fucking sermons and my yeah. lectures and and you know and then look now you know yeah. like now he's put me in certain places um of opportunity and maybe it would have happened with that or without, but who so knows? We right? know, yeah. We, I don't know what would have happened if this if this didn't happen. But luckily for us, it fucking happened. We don't got to worry about the what yeah, is anymore, so yeah, nah, nah, nah. man. But thank you again for giving us your time. Shout out LAFC. Shout out yes, sir. Michoacan. Find Michoacan. Yes, yeah. yes, sir. It's also like podcast. Make sure y'all subscribing, sharing, liking, and man, another Monday we don't miss. Let's go. Yeah.